My name is Laszlo and you're not. Welcome back to the Mandela Effect Adventures. Because the Mandela Effect doesn't seem to ever end, and it probably won't. So get ready, and welcome to the Laszlo Zone. I remember his name being spelled in a different way. Oh boy, sounds like somebody suffering from the Mingle effect. See, it's called the Mingle effect. It doesn't prove anything. Did you? Trust me, okay, I've done a lot of research into this since then, and the shop owner himself was a bit of an expert on the topic. It all started a couple years ago. People coming in looking for some fondly remembered item from their past, and I'd show it to them, but there was something just a little off, and they'd be like, no, I remember the logo being racist in a different way. It's like everybody's recall is just a little out of whack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think the government knows about it. Wait, what do you mean? Oh, come on, the government always knows more than they let on. For instance, do you think that the government didn't know when this was being sold back in the 70s that it wasn't full of carcinogens? They know the truth about the Mengele effect. That's when I launched my own investigation into the phenomenon. The Mengele effect is being intentionally orchestrated by someone. Who? And to what end? For the simple reasons that Orwell said, he who controls the past controls the future. The ability to manipulate memory creates unlimited power political, economical, cultural, runs the gamut from Holocaust denial to corporate product recognition. There are companies who are willing to pay anything, do anything to have people forget that their products explode on impact or suddenly catch fire. Com companies like G spending billions in profit to repress these memories. The only thing I haven't been able to do is to figure out how they're doing it. They can't, I I'm sorry. But this is ridiculous. I mean, the Mandela effect is simply... It's the Mingle effect, guys. It's the Mingle effect, just say it. Is simply people misremembering stuff. But maybe this is actually evidence of a parallel universe. Wait, Wait what? what? So maybe the, these differences in collective memories are actually evidence of, of our universe somehow becoming intertwined with another if not identical, then very similar universe. So people's memories are correct. They're just remembering something that happened in another dimension. Hence the discrepancies. That's science, Scully. Number one. I don't know what's going on right now in Jerusalem. There's something going on. But it looks like there's like a solar flare going on. This happened a while ago, but it was definitely Laszlo zone worthy, so. Number two, raisin bread. Who doesn't like raisin bread? Lots of raisins and bread. So on the cereal box, there's a guy and it's a son. And he has two scoops of raisins. But what happened to his sunglasses, man? Even though it's the sun, he still needs sunglasses. <laughs> I can tell you that he used to have sunglasses and Family Guy also knows that. And so does Rick and Morty. So we can't all be wrong. Day. Isn't it a gorgeous day, Mr. Sun? It's always a nice day with two scoops of raisins, Peter. <laughs> Number three. 
I hope you guys all had a good Easter, because on the Easter Islands, something magical happened. There's a bunch of rock guys, and now they all have hats. I thought it was fascinating. Never been there. It's in Polynesia. It was around the 1600s when these things were put up, but they have magical hats now. I don't know if they rolled them onto their heads, but some of them have hats. That's always fun. Each statue is made out of a single huge piece of stone, although some of the statues have an extra piece of stone on the top of their heads, carved into a top knot. On average, they are 13 feet or 4 meters high and weigh between 12 and 13 tons each. The largest moai ever erected, called Paro, is over 32 feet or 9.8 meters tall and weighs 82 tons. Although the statues are often referred to as heads, most of them have bodies. Some were buried in the ground up to their shoulders, and many more were tipped over. Number four! Hee <laughs> hee! You know the Pillsbury Doughboy? Now, he used to have a little blue bandana around his neck, and it's gone. Now it's white. It has apparently always been white. But I've found things on eBay and on Family Guy as well. People remember him having a blue bandana. But, it's white. And there's also things like memorabilia that you could buy that still have a blue bandana. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Burns. <gasps> Pop and fresh, you glutinous little doughboy. <laughs> there's something I've wanted to do to you for years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Mmm, <laughs> something smells good. Homemade cinnamon buns, fresh from the tube. Says I love you like something from. What the hell are you doing, you crazy pet? These ought to cheer Brian up. Number five, Neo Citrin. How do you spell Neo Citrin? You'd think it'd be something like citrus, not citran. That doesn't even make sense. Citron, citron, citrus would make more sense. How do you spell it? Number six. So we got a new upgrade again. We got a new body change. And it's called an intercidium. Yes, that's how you say it. I said it five times before I figure out how to say intercidium. <laughs> but apparently this new organ is a lining of your organs. This was just discovered recently with a microscope. New research published in scientific reports has revealed that the human body contains a network of fluid-filled channels that had previously been undiscovered. The spaces called interstitium were found all around the body's connective tissues, which lines things like your digestive tract and lungs. And according to Neil Teese of New York University's School of Medicine via The New Scientist, the area holds nearly a fifth of the body's fluids. Teese and his team add that the interstitium 
may also explain how cancer cells spread from one area of the body to another. Matt Yurish for CBS Film. Number seven, the Arctic Circle, according to Google Maps, is gone, but I don't think it's gone. I think if we took a plane and we went out there, we'd probably find something like this. But when we go on Google Maps, all we find is what? Water? Seems like a lie. They're definitely not real maps. We're being lied to. Number eight, water bridges. Now these water bridges seem really complicated and hard to build and they seem kind of pointless to the amount of work you have to do just to get boats across highways, which should be the other way around. It's very interesting how they're all over the world and I've never heard of them in my entire life. And they're called water bridges. Number nine. I have discovered that English is no longer valid, apparently, so don't worry about even going to school anymore. Because if you go look at the encyclopedia, the word encyclopedia is spelt wrong, so somebody needs to get fired. <laughs> the Encyclopedia Britannica has an A and an E connected together. Apparently it's been like that since they made the thing. I disagree. Number 10. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's just a moth. Don't worry about it. I don't know. It's like a hummingbird and it's a moth. It's a hummingbird moth. You can't even tell unless you really were close up, but the thing is quite a bit smaller than a hummingbird. Really interesting creature. But it's not a hummingbird. It's a moth. So, don't be too excited, unless you catch one, I want one. I don't think we have it where I'm from.
Number 11. If you like dolphins, and you're a girl, and you like pink, then you'll like pink dolphins. Because they do exist, and they're called Indo-Pacific humpback dolphins. They're pink, they got a big long beak, sort of. But they're pink. You wouldn't think dolphins would be pink, but who knows? People are pink. So you're a racist. If you don't like pink dolphins, you're a racist. <laughs> Number 12. Speaking of pink, I found a dragonfly. I didn't personally find a dragonfly, but there are pink dragonflies now. Pretty sweet. And they're very pink. I've seen blue and gray, I think. I've never seen a pink dragonfly before. Number 13. What color is an iguana? Green, right? No. No. Not green. Baby blue. They come in baby blue color now. <laughs> Can I get a baby blue iguana to go, please? I don't like green. It's not my thing. I like baby blue, not green. Number 14, it's called a Sagaya antelope, and it looks like it's an alien antelope, deer, I don't know what it is, it's just strange, very very strange creature, and it just doesn't look like it's from Earth, it looks like it's from like, Jupiter. <laughs> Number 50. Warning. This is the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's called the Damascus Goat. And they exist somewhere. But not here. It looks like some kind of goat from Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones or something.
Number 16. Wouldn't it be funny if horses had mustaches? Oh wait, they do have mustaches. Now, apparently. Some of them. Pretty funny. Number 17, if you find one of these things around your house, do not touch it because apparently they're very poisonous. They look fluffy and adorable, but if you get bit by one of these things, it's called a flannel moth. It's very poisonous, so stay away. But when they grow up, they become even more fuzzy little butterfly creatures called flannel moths, but they're flannel caterpillars when they're like that. <laughs> Number 18. Now this is called the split screen sunset phenomenon, which has been going around lately, which I believe is Mandela effect because I've seen it a couple times recently, and there is no legitimate reason why it should be happening unless something is trying to wake you up and say, hey. That's not right. But this little news lady thinks she's got all the answers. The wise, the sunshine is looking nice for the weekend. Interesting shot from Kelowna, just taken yesterday. Terry Knox sent us this, and if you're wondering, that is a sunset, but there's probably a terrain feature in this mountain that's just blocking part of it, and that's why it's split. It looks like two pictures side by side. I know, neat, eh? What a cool effect. Thanks, Christy. It's probably a terrain feature in this mountain that's just blocking part of it, and that's why it's split. Number 19, blue dragons. No, not those dragons. Not that dragon. I'm talking small little creatures that are in the water. They're called blue galactus dragons, and they're really cool. Very beautiful creature. Number 20. Now, I've covered flying things that shouldn't fly, like chickens. You know, they do have wings. But, did you know fish can fly now? Fish. So they're trying to get away from their enemies in the water, but then they fly out of the water and then they're attacked by birds. So they just don't get a break. Poor flying fish.
Number 21. Now, when trees start turning into Play-Doh colored rainbow, I get a little bit concerned because I want to grow these trees. They should be all over the place, like rainbow trees. That'd be fascinating. Hey man, you wanna go see the rainbow trees, man? Yeah, man. Now, if anybody can get a hold of one of these tree seeds, plant them all over the place, and then people will just be like, what is going on? I'm so confused. <laughs> Number 22. Now, if you have children, this may be a little disturbing because all your nice, cute little bunny rabbits and Cute little squirrels and deer you think are herbivores. They're not herbivores anymore, they're carnivores. And they eat anything. Now what is going on? Oh. He's got a bird on the ground, Michael. Yeah, there's a bird on the ground, it's hurt. The one? Yeah, he's picking at it. That's why they're beating him up. He's, he's got it in his mouth. Wow. He's got the bird in his mouth. Oh my goodness, he ate a bird? <laughs> Michael, he ate a bird. He ate a bird. Did you see that? Yeah. Oh my word. They're really going to beat him up now. Number 23, I saved the best for last because I thought it was hilarious. Now, if you go to Rome in the Vatican and you go check out Michelangelo's paintings on the roof in the Sistine Chapel, you will find God's ass. Yes, you will find a painting where God is mooning people. It's right beside the great Michelangelo painting of God and Adam and all the other paintings. I just want to give a shout out to one of my fans named Gosain Rhoda. He gave me a very generous tip and it helped me out a lot so I can get my own new little setup here. And it actually helped like a new studio and I can start getting really good videos out now. And I've been doing as much as I can with what I have lately, but now I can actually do more better for all you guys. So if you like my video, please like subscribe, share, and I will be back. And you have just watched The Laszlo Zone. Bye, have a great time.